Welcome to another Century 21 Affiliated Market Update. I'm Dan Cruz, President and CEO of Century 21 Affiliated, joined here with Bill Kessler, our founder, who looks a little tired because he has been on a trip around our different offices with the goal of hitting 100 offices in 100 days. So, Bill, you, you get any sleep or what's going on? Uh, well, it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> so, the, uh, the, the biggest um, effect on my physical body is that I've gained eight pounds. <laughs> Okay. Everyone is really welcoming and they have food and uh, the, the food, uh, you know, so when you do six, seven offices a day and you eat six or seven times a day because they bring homemade food, so you eat, it's nice. <laughs> and you got to be polite, that's so you right. have to do that's that's right. Right. And that really is the point of the trip is to show or, or reiterate that we in Madison are not just in Madison, that we are human, we are people, we're down to earth and that we care, we share, and we're very contactable and, com and communicable. And the response has been fantastic, as uh, I, know, I know you have, you made your rounds, and it's just, it's, it's great to see the affiliated family in action. And so many of our offices actually truly are families within the family. And the whole concept of having the central services uh, to support the local office, the local office having its own personality, its own persona, uh, it, it works, uh, it, it's great. Well, if you follow Bill on Facebook, you see he's been hitting a ton of offices, having a lot of fun along the way. Uh, I've been on a little bit of a road trip myself as we were doing a lot of our town hall meetings, meeting with team leaders, and we we're in Wisconsin, um, Michigan, uh, Indiana, uh, Illinois, meeting with those different team leaders. And I think both you and I heard a lot of the sim same stories when we were out there in the field. I think one of the things we want to talk about today is what's going on in the marketplace and what are we doing to attack those those changes in the marketplace right now. The, uh, there, there is amazing similarity, whether it's uh, Florida, Michigan, rural Wisconsin, or downtown Chicago. Yeah. No inventory. So, uh, and the 2018, 2017, excuse me, was supposed to be a piece of cake slide from 2016, and it's not been. Yeah. So it hasn't been a terrible market by any stretch. It has not been a difficult market, but it's been a challenging market. It has, and I, I mentioned this when I was out and about talking to the different team leaders out there. And, and I, by the way, I think you're right on. When I was having meetings in Madison or in Valparaiso, Indiana, literally you could have been in either spot. They were the same messages and it was all dealing with inventory and also also dealing with just the first quarter being a little goofy, a little wonky than we've seen in, in prior years. Uh, January started out okay. February was all right. March was really down compared to where we thought it would be. And then most of April was goofy. And then all of a sudden, the end of April clicked in and we ended up having a good tail end of April. Uh, a lot of pendings that have now spilled into May. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think when we look at the full first two quarters of the year together, the first half of the year, we'll be fine. It will look fine. The numbers will be fine. But we did have kind of a goofy start to this year. And I think all of us, all of us have seen that in your individual marketplaces when it came to market trends. So a couple of practical suggestions, um, and have been through four of these. <laughs> the suggestions are similar to the ones I've had in the past. So uh, we're probably a little more calm because we've seen it before. And many of you, this is your first crisis up a market as opposed to a crisis down market. And it'll end, but have fun with the meantime. Suggestions is that on a personal basis, you, the agent, do your best to keep that personal life, business life balance because you're going to be in stressful situations, which ties to number two, which is the more you can stay off the emotional roller coaster of your client and be the calming influence. I know we want to smash your head against the wall a few times, but don't do it in front of the client. <laughs> so we are the calming effect. We are, we, are, we are the big brother, big sister of the room. So to do that. Uh, suggestions for uh, getting listings, so they're not going to fall out of the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, the two things that seem to be working in various marketplaces, and I know will work at any marketplace, is going after the expires from five, six years ago, yep. not the ones from last week. Uh, those guys thought they were going to sell their house back in 2009, 10, 11, and they didn't, and some of them are pretty, still want to sell and are not particularly aware that the market has changed so much. You, I think you'll be surprised at the response, and you can get that list off your local MLS. And the second thing is the old buyer bump clause, I'll, I'll buy this house if I sell mine, has been reversed. Yes. And get, get that seller that says, uh, I'll sell my house, I want to, and I want to move, but I don't want to move, I don't want to sell my house, so I got a place to move. All right, well, the, the, the step in between is to say, put it on the market, 
and you accept any offer subject to finding a new residence within 30 days yep. with a bump clause just like you would have the buyers. We've heard a lot about that across the different states yep. that we're in. I think it's really good language to be to be using out there. The other, it's on uh, your website. Yeah, the other area I will talk about on the offer side, I think, is be creative because we have to be creative in this marketplace. Everybody is, and if you're not, you're not getting the deals done. And two, prices and everything. I heard from a lot of people saying they were frustrated because, you know, uh, agent wrote an offer, $10,000, $20,000 uh, over asking. 40, price yeah and, and they missed out on it because of multiple offers yep. but it was because of all the other contingencies involved in that so it's just not price because price isn't going to win it there's the other areas of the element of the the offer need to be put together and honestly streamline and in good shape otherwise you are going to miss out on those offers the biography of the buyer matters if it's if it's is that close if you make the buyer a real person the uh, removal of the finance contingency is great and uh, just humanizing the buyer to the seller really does help and on the counter multiple counter offer counter back even higher if you have to well thanks again for joining us guys i think this was a helpful one just to talk through some of the things going on in the marketplace uh, we'll be putting out another market update in a few months talking about where we're at kind of mid-year and any changes we're seeing to overall inventory and activity out there in the marketplace so until then guys thanks for watching have a great day uh, go out there and get them